After the nuclear weapons testing ban was signed on October 10, 1963, which banned all surface, space, and underwater nuclear tests, it did, however, allow underground tests, as long as they were under 150 kilotons, and the United States was worried that countries could somehow conceal their weapons tests by doing a series of tests underground in a certain manner. So to get data on seismic signals and patterns from such a test, the U.S. began Project Dribble, which was to basically figure out how to catch other countries cheating on their weapons tests. Scientists investigated several potential sites in Mississippi, but finally selected a site just north of Baxterville in Lamar County. Geologically, the area was called the Tatum Salt Dome due to the fact that about a thousand feet down below the surface, there was a giant, dense block of salt that is a remnant of an ancient ocean that used to cover the area. The plan was to detonate one weapon 2,700 feet down in the middle of the solid block of salt. This would end up being the 1964 test known as Salmon. It was designated to blast a giant cavity into the salt dome. Then, a few years later, after the heat had dissipated, they would lower a second weapon into the middle of the cavity and detonate it. That would be called Sterling. The reasoning was that since the second test was being done inside of the cavity, rather than solid rock, the seismic signal would be muffled and non-detectable by measuring devices. In 1964, officials from the Atomic Energy Commission began prepping the site for the test. The test was scheduled for September 22, 1964, but due to wind direction and weather, the test wasn't conducted until October 22. That day, over 400 locals were evacuated from the area and were paid $10 per adult and $5 per child for their inconvenience. Wow. Five miles downwind and 2.5 miles upwind was completely cleared out. The shockwave from the blast was much stronger than residents had been led to believe. A reporter at the local newspaper almost 30 miles away said that the building could be felt swaying for almost three minutes. At the test site, creeks ran black with silt-laden water, and by the end of the week, more than 400 people had filed damage claims with the government for damaged homes or wells that suddenly went dry. The salmon test was about 5 kilotons, or about one-third the size of the Hiroshima bomb. The second test, Sterling, was conducted on December 3, 1966, and was much weaker than the first test, only about 0.3 kilotons. Observers only two miles away said they barely even felt a bump. The project was labeled a success and proved that bombs detonated inside of a cavity did in fact have a much, much weaker seismic signal than bombs detonated inside of solid rock. Later, in 1969 and 1970, during Project Miracle Play, additional testing was done at the site. But instead of nuclear weapons being used, they pumped a mixture of oxygen and methane into the chamber left by the bombs and then detonated it. The site did become mildly contaminated during the testing. Two months after the 1964 test, a hole was drilled into the void left by the blast to lower instruments into the cavity to take measurements, and during the drilling, radioactive soil and water were brought to the surface. The same thing happened again in 1966 during the second test. In 1972, the site was further cleaned up by bulldozing the buildings, and the radioactive soil and water were pumped back down into the cavity where it remains to this day. Some of the radioactive liquids were injected into an aquifer named Aquifer No. 5, which was a vein of salty water located about 2,500 feet underground inside the salt dome. A large brass and stone monument was placed at the site to remind future generations not to drill near the site. In the year 2000, the government built a new water line to the area from further away to ease residents' minds about the potential of drinking contaminated well water. Although some Lamar County residents still complain of health issues or have become convinced that people living near the site get cancer easier, the U.S. government maintains that there are no health risks involved with living near the site.